clean water, clean energy. How are these related, and what do they have to do with carbon? We often take for granted the common kitchen sink with potable water, or the dozens of outlets staggered around our house ready to charge our gadgets or keep our food cold in the fridge. The reality is these luxuries are delivered to our households primarily by the burning of fossil fuels. Energy regulation devices which capture and store intermittent power surges need to be developed in order to make cleaner energy grids based on renewable resources economically feasible. Two technologies, supercapacitors and capacitive deionization, both use porous carbon electrodes to soak up and absorb charged ions when we apply a current to the electrode. Capacitive deionization is a method of filtering ocean water or brackish water to remove the salts and make it safe to drink. It uses conductive carbon nanosponges, which soak up salt ions and impurities when we apply a charge to them. A glass filter can be used in between the positive and negative electrodes to keep the electrodes from touching and shorting out. So how does this work? We have brackish water that flows in on the left side, and potable water flows out on the right. Inside we have two carbon electrodes, one negative, one positive, which, when charged, attract ions to either side. When the electrode sponges have soaked up all the salt they can hold, we say they are fouled and no more water can be filtered. You may be familiar with Brita-style carbon water purifiers, which need to be replaced every few months after becoming fouled with salts. CDI allows us to clean and reuse the filter by simply reversing the flow of water and the current applied to the porous carbon electrodes. The salts are backwashed out in a concentrated brine solution. Supercapacitors work like the CDI system, except we seal the electrodes in an airtight package with a liquid electrolyte salt, similar to the salt water being filtered in the CDI setup. When a current is applied to the electrodes, the negative blue electrode soaks up positive cations, and the positive red electrode soaks up negative anions. This charge imbalance between the ions is what stores the electric charge in a supercapacitor. Here, we see a close-up view of the carbon electrode nanosponge taken with a scanning electron microscope. The charged ions become absorbed on the walls of the electrode, setting up a charge imbalance. When we want to release the energy, we simply attach an external load to the circuit, and the ions move back to their respective electrodes. So now we know the technology, but how can these electrodes actually be fabricated? Supercapacitors and CDI modules are already being made using activated carbons. Nearly any biofeedstock, such as coconut husks, banana fibers, or bamboo, may be converted into activated carbon by heating it in a low oxygen environment at high temperatures. Further heating in various gases can etch nanopores in the material, increasing its surface area. Scientists have also developed new nanoscale electrodes out of carbon nanotubes, graphene, and carbon aerogels. Current research trends indicate that control over large macropores and tiny nanopores is key to increasing the efficiency of carbon electrodes. Shown here are several types of high surface area carbon materials created in research laboratories.